Cow Cow. Oh. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens... Wait a program. minute, Don. Hold it, hold it. We can't start the show yet. What's the matter? Well, Jack isn't here. Well, uh, we're on the air. Where is he? I saw him a little while ago. me, him. Don. I haven't seen him. Well, he should be here. Look what time it is. Yeah. I saw him a little while ago. Do you ago think I would go out and look for him, Don? <laughs> Maybe he's in the drugstore. Oh, he left there an hour ago. I wonder if anything could have happened. Gee, I don't know. I saw him a little while ago. Hey, maybe he's in the dressing room. <laughs> you know, he said he was going to take a nap. Oh, that's right. Go see if he's there, will you, Phil? Okay. I saw him a little while ago. Here comes Mary. Uh, maybe she knows. Uh, hello, Mary. Hi, fellas. Say, hey, Mary, have you seen Jack? Yes, he's out in the hall talking to Mark Sandridge on the telephone. That's what I've been telling you. Oh, oh hello, hello Dennis. Dennis. Hello, fellas. <laughs> You know, Don, if Jack doesn't stop complaining, Mr. Sanders will never direct another picture for him. Well, that's just silly. Jack shouldn't worry about whose name's going to be first on the screen. Sure, what's the difference if it's Jack Benny and Fred Allen or Fred Allen and Jack Benny? Well, if you ask me, it's... That's not what they're arguing about, Phil. (laughs) Jack wants the mayor of the picture to be held in Waukegan. Well, if you ask me, Waukegan? Another premiere in his hometown, huh? That's what he wants. Well, if you ask me, it's a swell idea. Bingo! Hey, Dennis, stop hogging the conversation, will you, kid? I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. Say, Mary, how's Jackson making out? I don't know. I better go out in the hall and bring him in here. Yeah, tell him we're on the air. Okay. Yes, but... Sure, but... Certainly, but... Absolutely, but... But Betty talks again. (laughs) Mary, get out of here, will you? We're waiting for you. Hurry up. Be there in a minute. Now, look, Mr. Sandridge. I don't care what Alan says. I want the premiere of Love Thy Neighbor held in Waukegan, Illinois. Yes, but... Now, wait a minute. Who's the star of that picture? Fred Allen or... Let me finish, will you? <laughs> well, look at it this way, Mr. Sandridge. You've already had a sneak preview, haven't you? Now, let me ask you something. Who gets the biggest laughs in the picture? Leave him out of it. I'm talking about Alan and me. <laughs> Oh. Well, I don't want to use pressure, Mr. Sandridge, but if you don't see things my way, I may get a new director for my next picture. What? Well, now hold... Now hold... Now hold... Now hold on, Mr. Sandridge! (laughs) Gee whiz, can't you take a joke? Wipe your forehead, Jack. Give me your handkerchief. Now look, Mr. Sandridge, I've got a program to do and I can't argue now. But that premiere is going to be held in Waukegan, or I'll take it up with Mr. LeBaron. Goodbye. Guess that'll hold him for a while. Who's Mr. LeBaron? He's in charge of production at Paramount, and he's a very good friend of mine. Come on. Wait a minute. Hello? What? Get the nickel from him. He called me. (laughs) Come on. Come on, Mary, let's go. Oh, don't get so upset about everything. I'm not upset. Who's upset? Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, hello. How's your program today? How do I know? Tune in and find out. <laughs> My program. We're not even on the air yet. Got a cigar on you, Mary? No, the doctor made me cut him out. All right. A cigarette. You know what I meant. Hello, Don. Sorry I'm late. Go ahead. Start the program. Okay, get ready, Phil. So mixed up, I don't know where I am. I know, but nobody will listen to me. All right, boys, get going. J E L L O. The Jell O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with I Just Want to Play with You. the other day, ladies and gentlemen, how easy it is to explain why millions of people like Jell-O. They like it simply because it tastes good. That's the whole story. And it tastes good because Jell-O has extra rich flavor. Flavor which is only rivaled by the juicy, ripe fruit itself. Yes, sir. For dessert at any time, there's nothing more delectable, nothing more inviting than bright, glistening Jell-O, smartly molded into an attractive shape and topped off, if you wish, with fruit or whipped cream. So try some Jell-O real soon in any one of Jell-O's six delicious flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, or lime. You'll especially enjoy strawberry and raspberry Jell-O 
because each of these grand Jell-O desserts has a new, improved flavor obtained by using a natural flavor base artificially enhanced. And that's why they have such a rich, delightful goodness. Get Jell-O tomorrow, and at the same time, order several packages of those Jell-O puddings. Jell-O puddings are made by the makers of Jell-O, so you'll know they're good. Jack Benny talking, and first of all, I want to thank my many friends who voted for me, and I also want to compliment my worthy opponent, Mr. Rufus Twelve Trees, <laughs> although his name didn't help him at all. <laughs> thanks, folks. Thanks a lot. I was wondering, Jack, uh, how did you happen to run for dog catcher anyway? Isn't it rather a menial position? Well, I uh, didn't really want to, Don. I was drafted, you see, but the committee, <laughs> the, uh... <laughs> The committee came to me and said I was the ideal candidate for the job. <laughs> Say, Don, I like the slogan the committee gave Jack. That really put him over. What was it, Mary? Vote for Benny. His nose is always cold. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't it at all. My slogan was, if you love your chower poodle, vote for Jack, the Yankee Doodle. <laughs> Of course, I got the uh, Pomeranian vote, too. Well, know. then you should be very happy about your new office, Jack. Oh, I would be, Don, but right now I'm having a lot of trouble with Paramount again. Also, Mary was telling us. It's about that picture you made with Fred Allen, isn't it? Yes, I told Mark Sandridge on the phone that regardless of what that Texaco termite wanted, the uh, premiere of my picture better be held in Waukegan or I'd take the matter up with Mr. LeBaron. Imagine Allen uh, wanting to open my picture in his hometown. Fred comes from Massachusetts, doesn't he, Jack? Uh, yes, Don. He was born under the Plymouth Rock. <laughs> and when the pilgrims landed, it didn't help his face any. <laughs> Not a bit. Say, Jackson, did you hear Alan's program last Wednesday? I had to, Phil. I was over to some friend's house, and they were trying to break the lease. <laughs> Their furniture was on the sidewalk before Alan got a laugh. What a program. And the way he's wasting that Kenny Baker. I wish he'd waste me like that. Dennis. <laughs> now, let me tell you another thing, fellas. I don't like to say this, but Alan's humor is nothing short of puerile and bano. There he goes again with puerile and bano. Say, Jackson, I meant to straighten you out on that. You've been pronouncing them words all wrong. What do you mean? Well, I found out in night school that the correct pronunciation is purel and banal. Oh, it is? That's what the hostess says. The hostess? <laughs> You know, the dame at the head of the class. That's the teacher. <laughs> the hostess. Phil, if you're paying tuition at that night school, you ought to get your diploma and your money back at the same time. I'm doing all right. You know, fellas, I took up hygiene last week. Hygiene? Yeah, you know, don't wait till Saturday night. If you want a bath, take it anytime. <laughs> I see. Well, I don't want to run you down, Phil, but I bet you can't even spell hygiene. Ah, yes, I can. Well, go ahead. I can spell it. I can spell it. Well, what's stopping you? He left his blocks home. That's a good one, Mary. All right, you wise guys. I'll show you I can spell hygiene. Give me a chord, Frankie. A chord? H-Y-G-I-E-N-E. -E, hygiene. How about that? A hand for that, folks. Huh? <laughs> well, I got to give you credit, Phil. That's a tough word, and you spelled it. No kidding. That was some feet. F-E-E-T. Feet. Oh, fine. I knew it was too good to last. <laughs> Phil, when I said that was some feet, I meant F-E-A-T. Oh. F-E-E-T is feet like I've got. Nobody's got feet like you've got. <laughs> well, Miss Livingston, that did it. There goes your Christmas present. There goes your Christmas present right out the window. 
You're doing a Christmas party early this year, ain't you, Kev? Yes. Keep it up. Keep it up, Mary. Now you won't get anything next year, either. I'm yeah. off the list till 1960. <laughs> 61. I'm not forgetting that cute little trick you pulled with your baton this afternoon. <laughs> Say, Dennis. Merry Christmas, Mr. Benny. Hmm. Uh, Dennis, don't you think it's about time? Answer the phone, Mary. Okay. Uh, Dennis, don't you think it's about time? Hello? For... Yes. Put him on, please. It's for you, Jack. Mr. LeBaron at Paramount. Holy smoke. Mark Sandridge must have got in touch with him. You want to talk to him? Certainly, but uh, but make off your mic secretary. A little front won't hurt any. Uh... Okay. <coughs> Hello? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is Mr. Benny's secretary. Well, he's frightfully busy right now. He's broadcasting. Mary, don't overdo it. You want me to spell hygiene for him? Get away from that. Uh, very well, Mr. LeBaron. I'll ask him. Give me that phone. <laughs> hello? Hello, Mr. LeBaron? Yes? Yes, I did tell Mark Sanders that I want the premiere held in Waukegan. I know, Mr. LeBaron... I know you're the production head, but I'm entitled to first consideration. If there's any B.O. in that picture, it's me. I mean box office. <laughs> yes. Yes, I understand that. Sure, but... Sure, but... Sure, but... What flavor, please? Quiet. Now, look, Mr. LeBaron, let me review this situation. You better sing, Dennis. It looks like a long winter. Okay. Now, Mr. LeBaron, Alan wants a premiere in his hometown, and I want it in mine. Now, the way I look at it, I've been under contract to Paramount for over five years. And I... in my hometown. I've already told Bidey Talcott. Who is he? Only the mayor of Waukegan. Where have you been? Take it easy, Jack. Well, now, look, Mr. LeBaron, we're not getting anywhere, so I'll take the matter up with Mr. Freeman. Goodbye. More trouble over nothing at all. Hey, Jack, who's Mr. Freeman? Uh, Frank Freeman, he's the big shot at Paramount, and he's a very fine southern gentleman. Oh, he comes from the south, huh? Yes, his home is in Georgia. Why don't you let me talk to him, Jackson? We speak the same language. Well, Mr. Freeman is a southerner, not a hillbilly. <laughs> so, uh, I'll do the talking. Oh, I suppose I'm a hillbilly. Well, Phil, all I know is when you came to work for me five years ago, I brought you in a shoe store to buy you a pair of shoes, and it took three men to hold you down. Remember? I go in alone now. <laughs> Uh, 
That's good. And uh, while we're on the uh, subject of your attire, Phil, that sport coat you're wearing is a little snug around the knees. <laughs> See, folks, I'm not kidding about that. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, getting back to our program, for our feature attraction of the evening... Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Is it true that you were just elected dog catcher of Beverly Hills? Yes. Well, you'll you never, never catch, catch me. Arf, arf. <laughs> There's a Mexican hairless, if I ever saw her. Now, uh, and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction of the evening, the Benny, anything from Shakespeare to gin rummy players, <laughs> will present an original mystery melodrama entitled Murder at the Soda Fountain or Hold That Malted. <laughs> now, I will play the part of a young soda jerk, Tutti Fruity Benny. And Mary, you're the cashier who is madly in love with me. Hooray. Hmm. <laughs> Now, Dennis, you're a college student who is always hanging around the drugstore, wisecracking. Oh, boy, at last some dialogue. Uh, no, Dennis, no. You see, as our play opens, you enter the drugstore, a shot is heard, and you fall to the floor. Dead. Well, can I wisecrack on the way down? No. <laughs> now, Don, uh, you're going to be a box of jello, so you'll have to crawl up on the shelf. What flavor am I? What's the difference? You're delicious. <laughs> Now, Phil... But, Jack, I ought to be some flavor. All right, Don. Pinch your cheeks and make off like strawberries. <laughs> now, Phil, in view of your knowledge of hygiene, uh, you're going to be the dishwasher. So uh, put on your apron. Why can't I be a soda jerk? <laughs> Read that right! <laughs> there was no comma there. You're going to be a dishwasher and like it. Anyway, folks, uh, this play will go on immediately after... Oh, darn it. Answer it, Mary. Okay. This will go on immediately. Hello? Yes? Put him on. It's Mr. Frank Freeman, Jack. Oh. Well, tell him you're my secretary. You know, like before. Okay. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Mr. Freeman. Hi, y'all. <laughs> Mary. Well, Mr. Benny's awful busy right now. Can I take the message, honey lamb? Mary, give me that phone. Fine way to the talk of the head of the Paramount. Uh, hello, uh, hello, Mr. Freeman. This is Jack Benny. Yes. Yes. Show enough? I mean, sure enough? <laughs> well, now, Mr. Freeman, I'll leave it to you. Where do you think the premiere of Love Thy Neighbor should be held? Greenville, Georgia? Who ever heard of that bird? Oh, that's your hometown. Oh, sure. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh sure, Greenville. Yes, I... Oh, yeah, I, I, I remember. I used to, uh... Oh, I used to, uh, play there in Baltimore. <laughs> yes, sir, Greenville. Boy, are you an apple polisher. Well, look, Mr. Polisher. Uh, Mr. Freeman. <laughs> Darn you, Mary. Look, uh, this whole thing is getting so complicated. Suppose I come to the studio and we'll talk it over. Yes, I can be there in a few minutes. Jack, we've got a play to do. Who cares? I'll be right over, Mr. Freeman. Goodbye. <coughs> come on, Mary. I want you to go along with me to Paramount. Rochester got the car outside. But, Jack, what about the murder mystery? We can do that next week. But you announced it already. All right. Dennis walks in the drugstore. Bang, bang. He falls to the floor. Mary screams. Ah! Who did it? It was it me? No. Was it Mary? No. Was it Don? No. Phil gets hysterical. I did it. I did it. Police come. Yeah! There's your play. Come on, Mary. Let's go. <laughs> Hurry, Rochester. Get the car started. Just as soon as I make my point, boss. Put those dice down. Hurry, Mary. Doggone it. We'll just begin to thaw out. <laughs> Hurry up, Rochester. I told you I had a very important engagement with Mr. Freeman. 
Now step on it. I'm giving it so much gas now, the corporate is thinking of buying a home in the valley. <laughs> Just keep that throttle wide open, that's all. <laughs> Say, Jack, uh, we're going the wrong way to Paramount, aren't we? Let's see. Oh, yes. Rochester, what's the matter with you? You were supposed to turn to your right here on Gower Street. I turned the steering wheel. Something ought to happen any minute now. <laughs> You took that corner much too sharp. Boss, we gotta take them any way we can get them. <laughs> well, you threw me all over the back seat. Are you all right, Mary? Yeah. <laughs> Say, Jack, what? you sure were neutral in the election, weren't you? What do you mean? Look at those three stickers on your windshield. Never mind. Root for Boss Roosevelt, win with Wilkie, and bark with Benny. <laughs> what was that first one you said? I don't know. <laughs> Root for vaudeville? <laughs> Rochester, the election is over, so you can scrape those stickers off the glass. And by the way, I'm making you a deputy dog catcher. Why don't you make me a dog? I work like one. <laughs> Too bad about you. Gee, Mary, I hope Mr. Freeman waits for me. I want to get to that uh, premiere matter settled. I brought your samples along, Jack. What samples? The Christmas cards. You might as well kill two birds with one stone. Oh, I won't have time for that. Say, Mary, I ought to stop at a drive-in stand and get Mr. Freeman an order of fried chicken. Fried chicken? What for? Well, he's from the South, isn't he? I can tell him I cooked it myself. <laughs> yeah, I got to do something to get in good with Paramount. Why don't you tear up your contract? Mary. <laughs> you just don't realize how important it is. Well, I'll be darned. Oh, Rochester! Yes, boy! You went through a red light! <laughs> Let's keep it a secret! <laughs> Watch your driving! <laughs> Want me to get a ticket? You won't get a ticket, boss. You're a dog catcher. You can go through a red light. Not unless I'm after a dog. And that reminds me, now that I'm a public official, I better get a siren in my car. Oh, what? A siren. There's one waiting on the corner. I don't mean that kind. <laughs> talking about a horn. <coughs> Someone wants to pass it. Pull over, Rochester. Okay. It's a sightseeing bus, Jack. Oh, yes. On your left, ladies and gentlemen, is the RKO studio. And, oh, look, on your right is Jack Benny's Maxwell. Well, would you mind sticking your head out, Jack? No. Get out of the way, Mary. Howdy, folks. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Say, you know, Mary, that was kind of a thrill. People from all over the country on that bus. Too bad you didn't pass out some autographed pictures. Yeah, darn it, I should have had them with me. I feel awful about that. Here's a gun. Blow your brains out. <laughs> now, Mary, remember what I told you a few minutes ago. You keep making those cracks, and that Christmas present will really be off. And if you remember, Miss Livingston, I hand out some pretty nice gifts. Uh-huh. Well, I do. Uh-huh. <laughs> what are you a hon about, Rochester? Last Christmas, I gave you a beautiful leather wallet to keep your money in. Yeah, I wish you'd give me another one just like it. What do you want two wallets for? I can put heels on them and use them for shoes. <laughs> oh, you're always complaining about being broke. Why don't you save your money? Why don't you put it in real estate like I do? I haven't got a shovel. Now cut that out. Rochester, if you're insinuating that I bury... <laughs> Rochester, pull over the curb. There's a dog without a light. <laughs> Quick, Mary, hand me that net and my cat. Oh, Jack, don't bother about this dog. It's out of your territory. That's right. Well, they can't say I wasn't on the job, though. Hey, Rochester, here's Paramount Studio. Pull up in front of the main entrance and wait for me. Okay. <laughs> wait here, Rochester. Come on, Mary, bring the fried chicken for Mr. Freeman. You didn't buy it. Oh, yeah. 
I'll tell him I gave it to a poor old lady. Do you think Mr. Freeman will be waiting, Jack? Sure, I told him I was coming over as soon as I could possibly find... Whose car is that? I don't know. Well, come on. Hey, wait a minute. Isn't that Mr. Freeman in the back seat? Where? Yeah, that's him. Hey, Mr. Freeman, start the car, Rochester. Catch that Cadillac. Catch that Cadillac. Oh, come now. <laughs> Now selling at lowest prices in history. Ask your grocer about his new low prices. 